my name is Mark Atkins and I live in a little place called Ogunbil, the land of the Gamilaroi people. Well, I play the didgeridoo. Didgeridoo is a Celtic word given to it. I call it a gulumbung. Uh, here in New South Wales, I call it um, uh, Yidigi, Queensland, Yidaki. It's got several different names depending on the tribe where you come from. And it's made of wood and hollowed out by termites. They talk about it being the, the sound of the Mother Earth. I can remember back in the 70s, they wanted to find out what the Earth sounded like. As far as they could, they stuck a mic down there. And the only thing they could think of that come close to a sound was a didgeridoo. I've always loved the sound of it and always wanted to take it somewhere else. Where does a didgeridoo start? Uh, well, it's, it's out there in the, in the scrub. And I've got one here that I've just started. This one has to come from this part, it comes from different parts of the country. This is what they call a bloodwood. Then it just starts off like, well, it's, you'll see it like that. And then, as you can see here, we've taken the bark off it. And if you're lucky, it's been hollowed out which this has by termites. Basically, I usually have a hard stick and I tap it, tap it, tap it, just to see how hollow it is, because you, you can hear it after a while. Then I'll uh, basically cut it down to what key I, I'd like it to be in. I usually cut it a little bit longer, so I've room to move. Probably about 90% of the time, what determines the actual note, the key of the didgeridoo is the length of it, but not the rule all the time, simply because it's the volume of space that you'll have within the wood. For example, if there's a branch was on it and come off, there'd be a pocket. And then different tools to sort of cone out the ends, which gives you that bit more volume. And then with the drills, you can take out a bit more, if you like, to flatten the note or to cut a little bit to sharpen the note. How the did you do works? It's always a question I get. And I say, well, it's a technique called cycle breathing which basically means you're, you're keeping the air up by breathing in through the nose and blowing out through the mouth. I'll show them an old trick that the old glass blowers used to use 100 years ago. How do you blow out and breathe in at the same time? You sort of watch and listen. As I breathe through my nose and I blow out my mouth. Now if I want to add a little bit more, sort of like uh, 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 push it, I'll use, I'll, I'll mix it with the breath. <laughs> For a lot of young fellas, I like a bit of techno, so uh, I use more of the tongue to, to, to move a groove along. With Ditch, if you have to keep a groove, You've got to learn to breathe the rhythm before you can play it. You can tell stories through it, and that's what I do basically. I'll, I'll set up the story, grab your log and play it, and people will just, just follow. You know. Okay, we've got the Moonbee Ranges, the Moonbee Hills, you know, and I've seen the story with a, with a truck coming down the road and trying to pass another truck, and there's a dog on the side of the road, and it's, it's, it's um, barking at the, the, the dog on the back of the truck. And, so I thought, well, okay, so, and it goes through, passes a truck and it toots its horn. So imagine that. Most of them have got their eyes closed and just laid back. And I go whack, I finish. They wake up and then all of a sudden just bang, you know, claps a few seconds later. But you know, you think, well, what have I done? But just to hear that and the sounds you're making, um, the stories you're telling, um, thank you. And I think, wow, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>